The GTX 750 Ti was definitely a card that I stopped recommending like a year ago, but with the GPU market the way it is, this actually very well might be a pretty decent temporary placeholder for you right now. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Just like always, today we're gonna to be talking about only the necessary information that you need about the GTX 750 Ti. We're gonna benchmark the heck out of it with 15 different titles. And most importantly, we're gonna figure out if it's a practical option for those of you that are either on a really tight budget or you're just looking for any graphics card to start playing games on right now until you get a more expensive upgrade in the near future. All of that though, after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under 17 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount, which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options. I'd recommend PayPal. And within a minute or so, you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter choose change product key, paste in your new key, and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs. Check out my purchased order history here. So grab a Windows 10 key for yourself with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. Before jumping into it, just want to quickly mention that you can find the GTX 750 Ti with the links down in the description. Those are affiliate links and that'll support the channel. If you're in a supporting mood, feel free to drop a like on this video as well. So first up, let's talk about the origin. The GTX 750 Ti was released all the way back in February. February of 2014 at an MSRP of $149. And man, I really wish they would release graphics cards at that price here in early 2021. As far as the current price goes, the GTX 750 Ti is officially too old to be sold new. Although I did find a single Amazon listing for a new one at $200. Don't buy that though. To get the used price, I went over to eBay and calculated the last 20 completed and sold auctions and the average price is right at $83. That's actually only a little bit higher than what the price used to be before the GPU market went crazy. So this actually isn't a super inflated price, believe it or not. Moving on to power requirements, these are honestly pretty irrelevant, but we'll list them out anyway. The TDP for the 750 Ti is between 55 and 60 watts, and for connections, some specific models do not require any external power from the PSU, like the Zotac model that I've used in previous videos, which you can check out in the upper right hand corner. The model that we're looking at specifically today does require a six pin connector, so if you're buying one for yourself, definitely be sure to know this ahead of time, especially if you're putting it in an OEM build that may not have a six pin power connector. Speaking of OEMs, that's probably all I would pair a 750 Ti with right now, something like a Dell Optiplex with an Intel second or third gen CPU would be perfectly fine. Unless if you're using it as just a temporary placeholder, I probably wouldn't pair it with anything else higher end. And then finally, before getting into that benchmarking section, let's quickly talk about this exact model that we'll be testing with today. This is the Asus GTX 750 Ti OC model, and it's rocking a base clock of 1072 megahertz, a boost clock of 1150 megahertz, 640 CUDA cores, and for VRAM, it has two gigabytes of GDDR5. For our testing rig, hopefully you already know the deal by now. This is simply a white gaming PC that I assembled on a recent Twitch live stream. I live stream all of my gaming PC builds over on twitch.tv slash saxtechturf, by the way. And yeah, here are the specs. For the CPU, we have a Ryzen 5 3600. For RAM, it has 16 gigabytes of this YOLO kit clocked at 3000 megahertz. The motherboard is an ASRock B550 Razer Taichi. All of this is powered by a white Corsair RMX 750 white power supply with some extra cable extensions. And all of our games are installed on a two terabyte in Inland Professional NVMe SSD. Jumping straight into it, we'll start with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War just like always. Did you guys see that sniping montage in the previous setup guide video by the way? Please check that out if you haven't already. And here with the 750 Ti in 720p with low settings, we got a little over that target 60 FPS mark. Next up was Valheim and here you're looking at the ZTT Discord exclusive server and wow, these guys are putting in some serious work. I gotta spend some more time on this one. And with 1080p and low settings, I got 51 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 was up next and in 720p with low settings, the 750 Ti only squeezed out 39 FPS, but it was still certainly playable. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as I like to always include this really demanding title, and this one wouldn't even launch. As you can see, we got a GPU does not support DX12 error. Big bummer if you were going to try to fire this one up. After that was Borderlands 3, and here I found a pretty good sweet spot at 900p, and with low settings, it cranked out 60 frames per second. Rainbow Six Siege followed up after that, and using the benchmarking tool in 1080p with low settings, we got a pretty decent 100 
101 FPS average. Red Dead Redemption 2 was up next just to shatter the little bit of momentum we had, and in 720p with low settings, I only got a measly 34 frames per second. Next up, I tested Gears 5 with its benchmarking tool as well, and once again in 900p with low settings, I got just under that target 60 FPS mark with 58. Following that, we have Far Cry 5, and in 720p with low settings, the 750 Ti got a pretty impressive 62 FPS. CSGO was next, no issues landing the headshots as this one was definitely pretty smooth because in 1080p with pro settings I got 182 FPS, this one does rely more on the CPU just as an FYI. Next up was Valorant, same deal with this one as the Ryzen 5 3600 is doing most of the work here but in 1080p with low settings I got 241 FPS. Getting towards the end here we have Rogue Company and in 1080p with low settings I landed a pretty nice FPS average of 144. Apex Legends was up after that, still haven't even been able to record a kill on camera for you guys yet but still in 1080p with low settings I got 72 frames per second. And to wrap up the games list for the benchmarks we have Fortnite, managed to tell a few of these noobs to sit down during the benchmarking run and in 1080p with pro settings the 750 Ti squeezed out 108 frames per second. And finally just like always I'd like to end the run on a 3D Mark Times by benchmark just for a consistent benchmark across other GPUs. You can click the link in the upper right hand corner to check out other quick GPU reviews just like this one by the way and this GTX 750 Ti managed to get a graphics score of 1318. So yeah, at $83, I actually don't have a problem anymore recommending the 750 Ti, just as long as you're pairing it with a really budget system or you're just using it as a temporary placeholder. If you're looking to see another quick GPU review, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.